Uh, so next, Professor Anne Doherty. Pro Professor Anne Doherty is from the College of Psychiatrists in Ireland, uh, but equally for her day job is working in the Matter Hospital pretty much on the front line in emergency departments and seeing some of the key issues related to drugs. So Anne, you're very welcome. Thank you very much, and I'm very glad to be here. Thank you so much for giving me the time to, to talk to you on behalf of the College of Psychiatry. Um, we are, of course, the, the professional and training body for psychiatrists who are specialist doctors in mental health care. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about, obviously this session is about legislation, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the current types of problems that we have and the potential impact that legislation may have on what we're actually seeing in terms of real harm and real suffering at the front line. So this is a slide from the Euroden study. This is a, this is a, um, a Europe-wide study which looks at substance misuse in emergency departments. It's got two Irish sites and what's actually quite interesting is that the two Irish sites are quite different in terms of both the numbers and and the types of substance use in those populations. So one is um, Drada, which there, as you can see, has um, cannabis and cocaine are the leading issues there. Um, and then the Matter Hospital, which, as you can see, is, is one of the bigger centres in Europe in terms of, of substance misuse, even though it's certainly not as big a hospital as Thomas's, which is the, um, which is, which is the, the large one there in London. Um, and again, there we're seeing, obviously, heroin, cocaine, cannabis, etc., being the main issues. So, our, my work in the, in the Matter Emergency Department, we work, um, we, we see people who present with mental health crises, who, people who come in in really, really, really bad ways, um, and who present with very severe problems. So we're talking about people who are presenting with self-harm or suicidal ideation, and those are, in general, about two-thirds of the people that I see in the emergency department are people who've tried to kill themselves or are having strong thoughts about doing that. A lot of the rest are people who have what we call psychotic symptoms, which is where they maybe are having experiences where they feel very, you know, it, they're, they're very much having experiences like maybe seeing vi seeing visions, hearing voices, feeling that they're, that, they're, that they're in grave danger. And they can be very, very behaviourally disturbed at that as well. It can be a, real, a, re a, really, a really upsetting experience for somebody to be having an experience like that. And what we find in the matter is that on the whole, the people that I see, 74% of them will have a substance use problem as part of their presentation. And of the people who present with self-harm, over 80% of those will have a comorbid or a, a, a mental or a, an addiction problem alongside that. And what we see specifically in that is that um, drugs play a, a, really, a really large part of that, and they're more than half of, of, of the substance um, use that we see, alcohol being about one in, one in five. So it's a real problem. It's a real problem at the front line. And I suppose... A lot, sometimes a lot of these debates get boiled down to numbers, but these are people who are having the worst day of their lives. If you're seeing me in the matter emergency department, you are having a really bad day. And I think we cannot underestimate the very real suffering that comes with these kinds of illnesses. Um, when we move on to self-harm and suicide more generally across the country, what we know from the National Clinical Programme for Self-Harm and Suicidal Related Ideation is that alcohol is a factor in over half of the presentations we see. And of course, alcohol is a legal drug, and we see problems with legal drugs as well as illegal drugs. Um, so we see problems with alcohol, we see problems with benzodiazepines and with uh, methadone, all of which are legal drugs. Um, and alcohol and drugs together are a factor in... 25 to 30 percent of attempted suicides in Ireland and the risk is highest in males and in the traveler population whom as we know have a higher risk of suicide anyway so these are a population that are very much at high risk and having substances in the picture increases their risk of suicide dramatically in terms of people who get admitted to mental health hospitals to, to psychiatric units these are very much the, 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 the most severe end of the spectrum in terms of illness. So these are people who are very, very, very unwell, usually people who are very suicidal and, and maybe who have, who have very severe psychotic symptoms. And of, the, of those who have an addiction problem as part of that, we see cannabis as being present in about 46%, so nearly half, followed by, as you can see there, cocaine um, and other medications as well. This graph is from Canada, and this basically is a peer-reviewed study that was published earlier this year, and this basically shows um, the patterns of, of, of 
cannabis-related emergency department presentations that happened over a, a four-year period from the three years prior to legalisation to post-legalisation. So as you can see, that line there with the big arrow on it is when, when legislation happened. And I think we can see that in the run-up to that, and this is possibly due to the fact that it became more socially acceptable to use cannabis because the legislation was imminent, we're seeing a great increase in the amount of people presenting to the emergency department with real problems. And when you when you read the data around this, this um, um, this study, you can see that the problems that they're presenting with are mainly mental health related. So people are presenting with psychosis, they're presenting with suicide attempts, and they're also presenting with some physical health problems that can come from cannabis. So one of the really common things that we see is something called ca cannabis hyperemesis disorder, where people have really, really, really bad vomiting that just won't stop. It. It's a really, it's a really hor horrible condition. So what we're advocating for is a health-based approach, where we think about prevention, early intervention and treatment as being the cornerstones of whatever happens. So regardless of whatever legislation is, um, is approaches taken, we need to make sure that these approaches are very firmly embedded in what we do. So in terms of prevention, we need to make sure that there's very robust public health messaging, particularly around the harms of the, of the, of the drugs that we see most commonly having an, an impact on people's health and on their lives, which are obviously cannabis and cocaine. Um, we need early intervention for at-risk groups, so these are people like pregnant, people in pregnancy, the children of parents who, who use drugs, and the traveller community, all of whom are very, very vulnerable groups and who need extra support Just and we need, there, we, we, need to, we need to intervene quickly and welcome. then in terms of um, in terms of treatment uh, and the other thing about early intervention is we need to we need to provide it where, where people are so if people are in primary care it needs to be accessible in primary care and if they are in um, if, if they're in the emergency department that's a really important place to be able to open the door to treatment and provide a window of opportunity and finally the treatment itself we need to have clear pathways and joined up services we don't have those we need to make sure we have the full availability available availability of all supports, including residential. Um, Bobby will probably talk more about adolescent addiction services, but they are absolutely key. And finally, the du dual diagnosis model of care is absolutely essential that this is properly funded and properly rolled out across the country. Where people have mental health problems and addictions together, this is a real significant need and they need support. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anne.